J-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program with Let's All Sing Together. When you were a youngster, did this ever happen to you? The family would sit down to some special dessert, but you weren't allowed to have any. Remember how hurt you felt? Well, that never happens when there's Jell-O for dessert, for Jell-O is marvelously light and wholesome, and the whole family can enjoy it, from Grandpa on down to Junior. And believe me, the whole family does enjoy it, for Jell-O is the perfect ending to any meal. Those six delicious flavors are as delightful and refreshing as the juicy ripe fruit itself. And those six gay colors, as cheerful as a rainbow, Make a radiant success of your dessert course. Make it something truly special every time. So treat the family to some Jell-O tomorrow. If you haven't enjoyed it recently, you'll find it even better than you remember. More delicious and inviting, more downright swell. Try it and see. Look for those big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O, and Jell-O spells an all-family treat. <laughs> was Let's All Sing Together, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the last installment of our recent journey to Yosemite National Park in Jack's Maxwell. The trip will go down in history with the adventures of Marco Polo, the exploits of Admiral Byrd, the voyage of Christopher Columbus. Don't forget the Rover Boys. Quiet, Mary. <laughs> As you remember, last week's episode ended with Jack skiing down a steep hill and crashing into the ski house, Ooh. with the result that he suffered a sprained ligament in his leg and several assorted abrasions. Oh, it's a miracle I'm alive. I must be made of iron. <laughs> Continue, Don. It is now several days later, and we take you to Jack's room at the Awani Hotel in Yosemite, where he is convalescing. It's my birthday, too, folks. Jack is propped up in bed, and as the scene opens, we find Rochester reading to him from a magazine. It was past midnight and the moon was shining brightly through the magnolia trees as Ronald walked into the garden. Carlotta heard his footsteps approaching and looked up like a frightened gazelle. That's gazelle. <laughs> That's frightened don't, gazelle. Don't be alarmed, darling, cried the young American engineer. It is I. I have come back for you. I knew he would. Carlotta's dark Mexican eyes flashed. Her lips quivered. Kiss me, she said. Kiss me. <laughs> All right, never mind the dialect. <laughs> Go ahead. The smile on Ronald's face suddenly turned to a sneer. It's no use, Carlotta, he said. I only come back to say goodbye. This is the end. The darn fool. Doesn't he know she loves him? But Ronald, cried Carlotta. You can't go. We're married. And what about the baby? The baby? What baby? That was last month, boss. We missed that. Oh. <laughs> well, that changes everything. Go ahead. Ronald turned and started toward the gate. Carlotta clung to him, and the tears came to her eyes. But Ronald laughed bitterly and struck her to the ground. The brute. She quickly arose and ran toward him. Mm. His back was turned, so she could not see the long, thin dagger flashing in his hand. A dagger? She crept closer and closer. Ooh. Ronald's back was still turned. Yes, yes. Please, Ronald, she cried. He did not answer. Oh. So she clutched the dagger and raised it high and high and high. Oh, my goodness. He better run. No hurry. Continued next month. <laughs> What? It's a fine ending. They always leave you in suspense like that. It's a great story, though. Yes, and you know Rochester would make a swell picture. Can't you just see me as the young American engineer that spurns the love of this beautiful senorita? Uh-uh. It's no use, Carlotta. I only came back to say goodbye. This is the end. <laughs> and then when she tries to kiss me, I'd knock her to the ground. Ha <laughs> ha, what I could do to a part like that. Uh-huh. <laughs> I wonder who the right girl would be to play opposite me. Of course, Hetty Lamar might be the type. She's dark and she's got those flashing eyes. She's too healthy. You'd never knock her down. <laughs> well, I still think we'd make a very romantic couple. Come in. Hello, Jack. Happy birthday. Oh, hello, Mary. Thanks. 
And I'm having a fine birthday this year, flat on my back in bed. Don't feel so sorry for yourself. Your leg hurts a little, that's all. Is that so? Well, if you want to know something, young lady, I had a pretty bad accident. And it's a serious case. Oh, everything is serious with you. It is, eh? Last month, you got a sliver in your finger, and you wanted to go to the Mayo Brothers to have it taken out. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Mary Livingston. That sliver wasn't in my finger. It was in my tongue. And it was painful. Well, I told you not to eat those good humors so close to the stick. <laughs> Mary, did you come in here to sympathize with me or aggravate me? I came in to bring you a birthday present. Here it is. Ouch, my leg. I got a sore leg. That's why I'm in bed. Didn't have to throw the package. I'm sorry, Jack. I forgot. What's the present? I'll open it later. It's a bottle of rubbing alcohol for your back. Oh. Well, you like it, don't you? Yes, thanks. It's just what I need. <laughs> rubbing alcohol, a fine birthday present. Anyway, I'm glad you dropped in, Mary. It gets so monotonous lying here in bed. How about another game of casino, boss? Okay, how much do I owe you now, Rochester? Let's see. I got the score right here. Four, carry two, and five. Well, how much is it? $8,000. Let's see that. That's $80. You're supposed to put a decimal point in there. You put in the money, I'll put in the point. <laughs> 80 bucks, eh? Why, Jack Benny, you mean to say you lost $80 to Rochester playing casino? Not only that, I was teaching him the game. <laughs> oh, well, we were only playing for fun. Hey, Roch? You ain't gonna Roch me out of it. <laughs> All right, Mr. Van Jones, I'll add it to your check next week. Wish my nurse would get here. She's supposed to be here at 8 o'clock, and it's 11.30. I saw her a little while ago. Where? She was out skiing with Phil Harris. Oh, fine. I pay a nurse $7 a day so she can slide down a hill with Harris. I never find her when I want her. Well, I think you went too far yesterday when you hung that cowbell around her neck. <laughs> well, I had to do something. Gee, my leg's throbbing and I got a fever and everything. Maybe that's her now. Come in. Hello, Jack. Happy birthday. Oh, thanks, Don. Happy birthday, Mr. Benny. Are you feeling better? Oh, a little, Dennis, but I'm still not myself. My leg hurts and I ache all over. Oh, that's too bad. Well, anyway, Jack, you're a year older today. That doesn't help any either. <laughs> now, listen, Mary, I wouldn't say anything if I were you after that birthday present you gave me. You know, fellas, I just received a lovely bottle of rubbing alcohol from Miss Livingston. No kidding. Yeah, what a present. Suppose if I had a cold, she'd have bought me Kleenex. <laughs> If I had a headache, she'd have bought me a box of aspirin. As long as you stay under a dollar, you're safe. <laughs> Just what I was getting at. I wouldn't mind that so much, Mary, but after the beautiful birthday presents, I always give you. Remember that mink jacket three years ago? Some mink jacket. Every spring it comes out to look at its shadow. <laughs> oh, you, you always have to run and get things appraised. Gee, I wish my nurse would get here or my doctor or somebody. I'm tired of lying here in bed. Do you want to teach me some more casino, boss? No, I lost $80. That's enough. And incidentally, Rochester, inasmuch as I was teaching you the game, I'm charging you $60 for lessons. So I only owe you 20. And if I recall correctly, I recently gave you my old blue suit, which is worth at least $20, so I really don't owe you anything. I knew we'd arrive there, but I didn't know just how. <laughs> Well, that's how, and the meeting is closed. I wish the doctor would show up. I want to get back to Hollywood in time for our broadcast Sunday. Oh, you'll make it all right, Jack. Sure, there's nothing the matter with you. There's plenty the matter with me. I just don't complain, that's all. Say, Mr. Benny, what song do you want me to sing next Sunday? Well, Dennis, what's popular right now? There's a new number out called The Isle of May. It's a ballad type. Would that be all right? I don't know. Does it fit you, Dennis? I think so. It goes something like this. <laughs> Lovely, I was lonely. It was springtime, and we fell in love. We strolled along through the heather, and it was June, June on the Isle of May. The heather Love was in bloom There on the Isle of May Close in your arms Heaven opened its door 
Well, Dennis, that song's going to be all right for the program. I think I ought to brush up on it, though. Maybe so. Oh, uh, Jack, speaking of Sunday's show, I have a problem that's been bothering me. You have, Don? Yes, it's been on my mind all day, and I just can't seem to arrive at a definite solution. My goodness, what is it? Well, uh, on next Sunday's show, I don't know whether to say, go to your neighborhood grocer and ask him for a package of Jell-O, or run to your neighborhood grocer and ask him for a package of Jell-O. Oh, well, that is a problem there. I like go. I like run. Yes, either one is good, Don. Let's no, see. Jack, no. I don't think they convey the idea of enough speed. Oh, oh, well, how about hasten, Don? Listen to this. Hasten to your neighborhood grocer <laughs> and ask him for a package of Jell-O. How's that for the customers? Well, I don't know. How about shooting him out of a cannon? Out of a cannon? That's it. Shoot yourself out of a cannon to your neighborhood grocer and ask him for a package of Jell-O. Thanks, Mary. That's terrific. You're welcome. See... Well, see you later, Jack. Oh, God. Wow, wow, Cannon. Yippee! <laughs> <laughs> Gee. Well, I'll be doggone. Me too. <laughs> well, if my nurse doesn't get here pretty soon, I'll say, Rochester, give me a spoonful of that iron tonic. Uh-oh, was it iron in that, boss? Why, certainly, iron and alcohol. My, my, that's the first time I ever had a metallic martini. <laughs> You lay off my medicine. Gee, my leg hurts again. I get those shooting pains. Come in. Oh, Jack, it's Dr. Nelson. It's about time. So it's you, doctor. Yes. Well, quite a little party we're having here. How are you today, Miss Livingston? I'm just fine, doctor. That's good. And you, Mr. Day, how's your health? I feel marvelous. Fine, fine. And Rochester, how are you feeling? Okay, Doc, I'm okay. Good. Well, I'll be running along now. Goodbye. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. I'm the patient here. <coughs> what about me? Oh, yes, Mr. Benny. Yes, yes. How is your arm today? Still bothering you? It's my leg, my left leg. My arms are all right. I just lost $80 playing cards with them. Oh, certainly it's your leg. You fell off a horse. A horse? Look, Doc, I never fell off a horse on my leg in my life. <laughs> Now, Doc, here's the whole story. Don't you remember? I hurt my leg skiing. I went down the mountain at Badger Pass and crashed through the ski house. Then we phoned for you and you came to examine me, remember? Oh, yes, and I'll never forget how you called me Daddy. Well, I was delirious, that's why. I was delirious. Well, just the same, it was embarrassing. I'm a bachelor, you know. I know, I know. <laughs> Now, look, doctor, I want to know if I can get out of here today and go home. You see, doctor, Mr. Benny's anxious to get up because it's his birthday today. Well, congratulations, young man. How old are you? It's none of your business. I'm old enough to vote. For Lincoln. Mary. <laughs> I'm trying to get some information here. Now, doctor, when am... Oh, come in. Well, Jack, your nurse finally arrived. So I see. Awfully glad you dropped in, nurse. How's my little patient today? As if you cared. And take off those skis. <laughs> my goodness. Well, I'm only going to be here for a minute. Did you hear that, doctor? Fine nurse you recommend. He's supposed to be taking care of me. She's out skiing with Phil Harris all day. You're a naughty girl, Miss Kelly. I'm sorry, kid. <laughs> 
Uh, later, Miss Kelly. Hmm. Now, look, Doc, I want to find out if I can uh, Miss get... Kelly, will you please take Mr. Benny's pulse? Okay, Doctor. Let me have your wrist, Mr. Benny. Here. Well, are you going to come here? You want me to throw it over? <laughs> now, come here. All right. <laughs> here. Here's my wrist. Nothing but screwballs in this room. I'll bet $10 Olson and Johnson are under the bed. <laughs> well, Miss Kelly, what about it? Oh, doctor, Mr. Benny has no pulse. I can't feel a thing. Of course not. You're wearing mittens. <laughs> no pulse. Why, the blood just leaps through my veins. It can't be that happy. That's all. Right. <laughs> now, doctor, for the last time, I want to find out if I can get... Oh, for heaven's sake. Come in. Hiya, Jackson. How's your leg? You're certainly worried about that, Phil Harris. Hello, Phil. Oh, there you are, Miss Kelly. Hiding from me, huh? Hiding from you? She works here. <laughs> and incidentally, Phil, when you came in, you might at least have wished me a happy birthday. Oh, yeah. Happy birthday, Jackson. Keep it. Happy birthday. Oh, is this your birthday, Mr. Benny? Yes. Well, if I'd have known that, I'd have put a candle on your poached egg. <laughs> Oh, that would have been lovely. You know, Jackson, I forgot all about this being your birthday, and I feel terrible about not bringing you a gift. Oh, you do? Yeah, I don't want you to think I'm a heel. Believe me, Phil, one little present won't influence me one way or the other. <laughs> so don't worry about it. Well, I think I'll be running along now, Mr. Benny. Now, wait a minute, Doctor. You haven't told me if I can leave here today and go home. Oh, my goodness. You could have gone home four days ago. I could? Then why keep me in bed? Why didn't you tell me then? I'm gonna pack and get out of here. What's my bill, Doctor? $35. $35? I make it $37.50. I saw a suit I like today. <laughs> You'll get $35. Rochester, take care of that, will you? Okay, boss. Do you play casino, Doctor? <laughs> yes, I do. Follow me. <laughs> keep your fingers crossed, Mary. What do I owe you, nurse? $42. That's six days at $7 a day. Now, wait a minute. You only dropped in for lunch. The rest of the time you were skiing with Phil Harris. Well, I'm the outdoor type. Well, then get out of here. Here's your money. Thank you, Mr. Benny. Goodbye. Goodbye. Come on, Philzy. <laughs> right with you, baby. So long, Jackson. See you in Hollywood. I'm going to get dressed. Hand me my robe, Mary. Here you are. It's about time he took that emblem off the back of it. Never mind that. Look at that. Golden Gloves, 1898. <laughs> my father's robe. Now, Mary, call downstairs and have the room clerk make up the bill. Tell him I'm paying for everybody's in room but my nurse's boyfriend. Okay. Oh, Dennis, help me get my things packed, will you? Yes, Mr. Benny. Hello, the room clerk, please. Dennis, take all my shirts and socks out of the top drawer. Hello, room clerk. Will you please make up Mr. Benny's bill? We're checking out today. Dennis, hand me that suitcase, the larger one. Yes, everybody except Phil Harris. Well, I put the sweaters. Right in there and keep them together. How much does that amount to? And don't forget my skates. $198? And put them in my... $198? <laughs> well, have it itemized. Thank you. $198? I've been in bed since the first day here. Come on, Dennis, get going. Pack, pack, for heaven's sake. Yes, sir. Come in. Telegram for Jack Benny. Take it, Mary. Okay. Where do you want these pieces of skis put, Mr. Benny? Throw them in the fireplace. <laughs> Who's the wire from, Mary? Fred Allen. Fred Allen? What does he say? <laughs> All right, what does he say? He says, Dear Jack, as long as you're made it, happy birthday. <laughs> well, you can throw that in the fireplace, too. Dennis, not my underwear. I meant the telegram. Give me the poker, quick. Give me the poker. Oh, what a kid.
see. I wonder if I... There, I hope I didn't forget anything. That was quick, Mary. You all packed? Yeah, how did you like Phil? Well, I can't put much weight on it yet, but it's all right. Rochester, did you get all the stuff out of the bathroom? My razor and everything? Yeah. Say, boss, do you want that old tube of shaving cream, too? Of course I want it. There isn't enough there to shave the fuzz off a peach. I have a very light beard, so get it. Now, let's see. The bellboy took the other four grits. Rochester, grab those two. Mary, help me with this big one, will you? Okay. Oh, now what? Come in. Well, well, how's my little patient today? You were here already, doctor. <laughs> oh, that's right. Goodbye. <laughs> hmm, what a cluck. How'd you make out with him in that casino game, Rochester? Okay, what can I do with a stethoscope? <laughs> You didn't have to go that far. I just wanted to square the bill, that's all. I got enough pills to last me for the rest of my life. <laughs> all right, now grab those two bags and let's get moving. Come on, Mary. Is Dennis packed? Yeah, he's downstairs in the lobby. Then let's get on our way. You go ahead, Rochester. <laughs> Come on, Mary. We'll stop, uh, we'll stop at the cashier's desk and take care of the bill. Oh, Don. Yes, Jack. Help everybody get their things in the car so we can get started. Okay. And by the way, Jack, I think that cannon idea is going to work out all right. What cannon idea? Well, you know, shoot yourself out of a cannon to your neighborhood. Oh, closer, yes, yes. I... Congratulations, Don. See you in the car. Oh, cashier, give me my bill, please. Uh, here you are, sir. It's $198.40. $0.40? $40? Oh, you just told Miss Livingston on the phone that the bill was $198. What's the extra 40 cents for? There's a towel sticking out of your suitcase. <laughs> I brought that with me. It's mine. Certainly. It says Blue Bell Auto Court on it. Of course. I'll make out a check, young man, for $198. Now, let's see. The Awani Hotel. Uh, how do you spell Awani? Awani? Hey, Eddie, how do you spell Awani? Awani? Hey, Bill, how do you spell Awani? Awani? Hey, Sam! Never mind. I'll just make it out the cash. That's good enough. Uh, you know, Awani is an Indian word. Yes, yes, I heard all about it. In fact, I'm an Indian myself. I know, I can see where you were scalped. <laughs> now, here's your check. Thank you, sir, and a happy birthday. Fine birthday. Come on, Mary. Oh, Jack, here comes your doctor. Oh, yes, I might as well be nice to him and say goodbye. Oh, doctor. Yes? I'm checking out, and I just want to say goodbye to you. Goodbye, and I hope you've enjoyed your stay here. Oh, I have. It was very pleasant. I'd like to walk out to the car with you, but I've got to rush upstairs and see Jack Benny. He hurt his leg. <laughs> oh. Well, listen, doctor, if you knock on Mr. Benny's door and he says, come in, drop the conversation. <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye. Come on, Jack, we're waiting for you. Yeah, hurry up, Mr. Benny. I'm coming, I'm coming. Be right with you. Oh, Mr. Benny, Mr. Benny. Yes? You're wanted on the telephone. You can take it right here. Thank you. Who would be calling me here? Hello? Hello, is this Jack Benny? Yes. This is Western Union. We have a singing telegram for you from your father in Miami Beach. It's a birthday greeting. Oh, a singing telegram from Dad, eh? Well, that's cute. Go ahead. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, Jack Benny. <laughs> Look, that was happy very... Birthday. Thank you very much. That was swell, really. Oh. Look, I've got to get away happy now. Happy birthday to happy, you. Happy, 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 happy birthday happy to birthday you. Happy birthday to you. The car is waiting happy, for happy, happy, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Jack Benny. Happy birthday, dear Jack. Happy birthday to you. Well, that was awfully sweet of you, really. I... Happy birthday, Happy Benny. Well, thank you, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yes, you're welcome very well. 
Be darned. Come on, Jack, hurry up. I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> yes, sir, ladies and gentlemen, three weeks ago when we told you about Jello Orange Vanilla Whip, we really started something. Letters have been coming in every day telling us how much folks have enjoyed this new Jell-O dessert. In fact, it's proved such a big hit that we've decided to give you this swell, easy recipe again for those of you who may have missed it the first time. Here's how it goes. Take one package each of orange Jell-O and Jell-O vanilla pudding and make them up as you usually do. Then chill the orange Jell-O and whip it as directed on the box. Next, chill the Jell-O vanilla pudding and add to the whipped Jell-O, beating constantly until blended. Then mold and you have a grand, inexpensive treat, simply ideal for parties and special occasions. So friends, be sure to try this intriguing new combination of golden orange jello and creamy jello vanilla pudding. It's really different, really delicious, really top. <laughs> Well, folks, we're on our way home now. This is the last number of the 21st program in the current Jell-O series. And we will be with you again next Sunday night at the same time from Hollywood, California. You know, Mary, it was thrilling being up in Yosemite, wasn't it? Yeah, it was swell. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> I'll never forget the expression on your face when you crashed through the ski house. Boy, that was fun. Quiet, Dennis. <laughs> Good night, folks. Janky, help, help. Oh. And here's more fun and enjoyment for you. Tune in every Tuesday night for another swell half hour of Jell-O entertainment, the famous Jell-O Aldrich family. See your local paper for time and station. This is the National Broadcasting Company.